What's going on YouTube? My name is Alex. This is Ask the Cheese Gaming. I'm back with another video game review for you this week. In this week's review, I'll be taking a look at Tonic Trouble for the Nintendo 64. It was developed by RFX Interactive and published by Ubisoft with a North American release date of October 21st, 1999. Though, I have seen one source that claims it was released in March 31st, 1999, so just be aware of that. This game was also released for PC and Game Boy Color. The story for Tonic Trouble is, Ed, a purple being who is aboard a spaceship, is mixing up all kinds of potions. He inadvertently drops one, and it plummets all the way to Earth, causing all kinds of havoc to ensue on this ordinary planet. For starters, ordinary plants suddenly become monster killer plants. Now Ed has to journey all the way to Earth with some help of the friends, which you'll see along the way, and try to set things right and stop the evil Grode, or however the heck you say his name. Forgive me, I'm probably mispronouncing it. As you'll see right away from the gameplay here, Ed is a purple thing that can jump, throw his limbs, and later on get certain weapons like a stick, or when he eats popcorn, he grows into Super Ed that can trample over everything in his path. You can also later on get potions that give you special powers. Tonic Trouble is considered by some to be the spiritual prequel to Rayman 2 for the PlayStation 1. Now, I would like to touch briefly on this game's music and sound effects. Overall, the music in this game is charming enough. I wouldn't say that it's Ubisoft's best work, but it does fit the overall theme of the game. If I have one complaint about the sound effects in this game, it's that Ed really doesn't say a whole lot. He makes a lot of noises or just a couple words here and there, and that could be kind of tiresome. I would have liked to hear him talk a little bit more, or some of the other NPCs in this game. Also, the sound effects for some of your attacks just feel a little underwhelming to me. Where this game really shines, though, is in regards to its controls. Whenever Ed grabs a hold of a ledge, you can either pull down on the joystick to drop down, or you can jump up, and if you do it right, you can actually re-grab the ledge. So, they definitely managed to make ledge grabbing a lot better than most of the 3D era platformer games of this time. If I have one major gripe with this game, or what I believe to be its biggest flaw, it's the fact that the camera never seems to go where you want it to. More specifically on this, there's actually certain parts where you're platforming in this game where you can't change the angle of the camera at all. My best suggestion for you if you decided to grab this one, just get used to hitting this Z button. It allows you to recenter the camera behind you. Because otherwise, you're going to have all kinds of trouble with it. I mean, is there really a 3D era platformer where the camera was actually like good or perfect that nailed it down? I mean, I, I guess Mario comes to mind, but even that camera was sometimes of a struggle. So finally, let's answer the question. Is Tonic Trouble worth picking up and adding to your Nintendo 64 collection today? Well, with a price driving price of $21, you could certainly do far worse than this game. If you love the Rayman games, which this game is heavily similar to, or just 3D era platformers, I think you'll thoroughly enjoy this one. Thanks for watching everybody, and until next time.